Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I saw you were at a fun little kind of beach hotel on your stories. That looked nice and relaxing. Yeah, I'm just here doing my like little quarterly retreat, getting away from the family, just trying to plan out what next quarter is going to look out look like. And so I have this lovely hotel um, artwork in my background. <laughs> and you should see the setup I have here because I realized I didn't have my like tripod. And uh -huh. so I have like all this stuff propped up on a table right now. It's like on top of books and everything. So it, it's not oh, like perfect. And I'm not at a hotel. So, so <laughs> yeah. it's totally fine. I, um, I've never went live on my computer on Instagram before. I've always done it on my phone. Yeah. So I was, I don't know if it's going to let me do it on my computer. So then I just like, you know, went back to my phone. Cause I was like, I know how to get on, on there, but I don't know how to get on yes. my computer. So I had to like, figure out how to prop my phone up for a live. Yeah. I actually don't know how to do it on the computer either. So I'm uh, very glad that we figured it out though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I know, okay. I feel like we've gotten more questions between posting this to both of our stories last yesterday than like any other live that I've done. Um, oh, wow. We've gotten a lot of questions from people. So I wanted to start by just um, giving you the opportunity to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your practice, who you serve, um, and then we can kind of get into the RWS stuff. Does that sound good? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I live in Michigan. I went through the Nutritional Therapy Association um, right before COVID, so it would have been 2019, and my class kind of the COVID and shut down, everything happened right in the middle of my class. So it was a very interesting experience for me because it went, it went from in-person to virtual halfway through. We kind of had to change completely what we did. Oh my gosh. Um, and then, yeah, so it was, it, I mean, we learned to kind of roll with the punches, I guess, with what we were doing. Um, and then following getting my NT, FNTP cert, I went into RWS right away, and I have always focused on, in my practice, working with women to help them heal their guts, but also balance their hormones naturally, and that's kind of my niche, if you may say, and I really had a draw towards that niche specifically just because of my own health journey. Um, right when I graduated college, I was diagnosed with MS. So it completely changed the trajectory of what I was doing with my career because mm -hmm. I was getting ready to take all the grad school entrance, entrance exams. And my doctors were like, you know, that stress load right now is not good for what's going on with your health. So I kind of had to change my career path completely. I, for a short minute, went and I did hair. Um, and then I had some health things happen again. I stopped doing hair and then that's what led me to the NTA and pursuing a, um, career in nutrition. And so that's just kind of my passion. I don't work with autoimmune patients specifically, although I do, or clients specifically, although I do see a lot of autoimmune clients in my practice just because they kind of know my story. So they're a little bit more drawn to me, but it's not, a niche I would say that I focus on. I focus more so on women, their gut health and balancing their hormones. Okay. And I saw a question come through um, of just what is RWS? Just I wanted to make, I, I feel bad that I didn't even say it's restorative wellness solutions. And it's a certification that you can get after, um, after you graduate with another nutrition certification. Do you have to be an NTP to go through RWS? I no. You know to be an NTP. However, I do not know if people from every nutrition certification can go through RWS. I've got that question before and I should have looked into that before. I didn't even think of, I didn't think of that one. I'm not sure if people okay. that have like INN and stuff like that can go through RWS. I do know that RWS takes people like chiropractors, um, I believe pharmacists. I know they take nurses, obviously they take doctors. Yeah. Um, but they have a really responsive, um, just kind of a, I don't know what to call her exactly. She just works like the back end and she responds really well with any questions that you would have if you go on their website. Her email is listed, I believe, and they really do answer any type of logistical questions like that if you qualify for that program or not. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, so yeah. hopefully we answered that. And really quick, where in Michigan are you? 
I'm in Midland. So I grew up right on the border, like, um, right, like I could walk to Indiana from my house. I lived on a farm there. And then after I graduated college, I went to Michigan State. Um, my now husband lives in Midland. He went to college here and I moved up here. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I went to college in Michigan. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I went to Hope. Okay. Which is in Holland, but I actually know many people from Midland. So that is really funny. I know it's a really small world. So maybe we'll have to yeah. connect outside yeah. of this. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, but okay, so what made you choose going through RWS when you finished the NTP program? Yeah, so I wanted a diagnostic testing option. And I felt like what they had to offer was very well known. I felt like they had people that were teaching the course with very good, solid experience who had been trained under functional doctors to learn how to interpret this test and how to build protocols. Um, so I liked that about it. I had heard so many good things about other NTPs who had went through the program from it. And I talked to a lot of NTPs or FNTPs who had gone through the program and they just had nothing but good things to say about it. So um, I really wanted to be able to start incorporating functional labs into my practice. And I would say coming out of the NTA, I felt a little shaky when it came to gut health, and that was what I wanted to focus on specifically. I knew RWS could really strengthen my knowledge as well as give me the opportunity to test. Mm -hmm. So I, I went that route. Okay. And so um, just for anybody who's not familiar with RWS, so you have to go through it in different levels. Level one is the gut testing level. So you learn the GI map and MRT, right? Yes, and then you also learn um, SIBO testing, which I'm kind of blanking on the name for that because I don't use that one a lot, um, okay. but you are given, you can run that and they do teach you how to run that one specifically. Okay, so gut taste, gut, or sorry, GI map, um, MRT, and SIBO testing. And then uh -huh. you also went through level two, which is hormone testing. Um, yes. more hormone focused and that is the Dutch test and is there any other types of hormone testing that they go through yep there's the Dutch there's a saliva panel so in case urine testing isn't your preferred route of testing you are trained on saliva panels and that just comes down to who your client is the symptoms that you're working with and you kind of determine which test is right mm -hmm. you'll also do um, adrenal testing as well and then there are bone density test that, again, that's not one that I use a lot, but for older clients, if they're really um, concerned with osteoporosis and things like that, there is a bone test that you learn too. Okay, awesome. So yeah. how much testing would you say you actually do for your clients? How do you make the decision if somebody needs testing or do you always run certain tests on every client? I don't run these tests on every client. I would say probably 60 to 75% of the time I don't actually run okay. um, maps or MRTs just because I feel like when clients come to me, they're not at a point where they're necessarily ready to run those tests. Mm -hmm. Their diet is not completely right or they might be, you know, just eating like a lot of fast food or eating out a lot when they initially come to me. So I feel like that's a huge disservice to just run a GI map on someone who's struggling with digestive issues if they're not putting the correct nutrients in their body to function optimally. Um, right. times once we address things through food and we get things working correctly from there, they're at the point where they don't necessarily need a GI map at that point. So I feel like if they're not putting in the basics to their nutrition and lifestyle and just things like kind of living with an overload of environmental toxins, um, it's a disservice to have them do that right off the bat, in my opinion. Yeah. I love that you're so aware of that and that you're not just running them and saying like, okay, you have to run this on every, run, run this no matter what, even if you're eating fast food every day, like let's run the GI map and see what we need to do. I think that that's really smart because it's not cheap to run them. No, it's all. not. Honestly, a lot of clients, I work with a lot of women who struggle with constipation, and if they're really struggling with eliminating, and then you do all these eradicating um, protocols on them, they're not going to respond very well if their detox pathways are open, and it's going to 
it's going to result in an unpleasant experience for them when they don't feel good while you're running these protocols. So ideally, I feel like you need to be in the right place nutritionally mm -hmm. to have the best success with these tests, especially for like sustainability and to make this change work for the long run. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so we got a lot of questions um, comparing RWS to the NTA from like, how much work is it? How much time did it take you? Um, that kind of thing. Can you go into a little bit of that? Yeah, so I would say because the instructors are their previous NTA instructors, mm -hmm. I would say there's a lot of similar things in terms of the course format with how they run things. So for example, it's, if you're familiar with the NTA, there's no really strict due dates, but you have to have, I mean, they might change kind of how they do this, but when I was in it, mm -hmm. there was no dates, but there was kind of um, benchmarks that you had to meet by certain dates. And that's how RWS is too. And um, I lost my train of thought. We're talking about structure, right? How, um, yeah. how structure. Yeah, like um, how much time it took you, like maybe on a weekly basis. Yeah, so it's it's very similar to that of the NTA. However, I would say I spent less time with RWS than I did the NTA because they give you the module that usually people will do like one module a week. And then you have a live call that's about an hour. So you go through the module, you watch the live call. Um, usually I would read through the module again and that's all the work. There's not all the extra reading that's required like in the NTA. There's not all the extra projects. Um, I believe there is a, so there's a case study project at the end of RWS that you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, and the way they set that up is they gave you like kind of like a faux client and they give you the results and you had to do a write up as to how you would put together a protocol for them. And that's something that is a little bit time consuming just because you're so new at it and you want to make sure everything's perfect because it's essentially like a final exam. But mm -hmm. I would say I usually spent maybe like five hours a week on like doing my RWS work. So I would say it's very manageable if you have other things going on in your life. Okay. Okay. So for people, I see that, um, the Caitlin Martinez is interested in potentially joining RWS in the future. Um, when would you recommend somebody decide to do that in their business or um, like, or would you recommend um, going, like, are there reasons you would definitely recommend going through RWS or not? Um, so I would say it, I would say I would judge this based on how you feel comfortable. For me, when I graduated the NTA, all the courses I feel like, or all the um, like, cohorts or little groups that are within the program are very different because you get different instructors. Um, for me, I felt pretty rocky when it came to addressing gut health and I that's really what I wanted to know. So although I felt like I had a really good foundation, I just didn't have the confidence yet. So that's why I went through right away. I don't think that there's a problem with that whatsoever. However, if you feel very confident, work on the skills that you have and build that skill set. And there's no harm in waiting and doing something later on down the road because the NTA really does give you a lot. And a lot of these nutrition programs really do give you a lot. And I know people feel like the imposter syndrome, like they have to have all the things and all the certifications in order to start seeing yeah. clients. I think um, really working on the foundations that these programs give you, they're really, really important. And don't feel like you have to just have another test to offer clients. Mm. Um, so did I, did I answer that question? Yeah. And so I think it also um, just kind of chiming in my own ideas on, even though I haven't been through RWS, a lot of it does depend on your niche too. Like if you're yeah. trying to work with people that um, are chronically ill, they've maybe tried everything, like their diets are pretty on point already and you're trying to get to the next level with them, RWS would be a really good place to go to learn all of those tests and be able to run them. But if your main population is helping, I don't know, moms clean out their pantries and make sure that they're eating whole foods, maybe it's not the first place to jump. Is that kind of what I'm hearing? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let me see. So I know you've talked a lot about the gut testing. How often do you use um, Dutch testing and hormone testing? So I actually, if it were up to me, so we mentioned before that you have to do RWS and levels. You have yeah. to do first and level two is hormones. 
I really, really want to do blood chem. That's level three. And so you have to do level two to get to level three. I would say I don't use Dutch testing a ton. Um, I do have several fertility clients that I'm working with right now, though, and it's been very helpful for that. Um, however, it's not something that I really do a ton of just because, as we kind of know, a lot of hormonal health is not necessarily foundational health. It's more of like consequential health. So mm -hmm. when you clean all of your foundations and you really establish, um, you know, getting enough minerals and balancing those out and working on healing and sealing the gut and eradicating anything, balancing blood sugar, by that time, people aren't necessarily at a place where they need to run these hormone panels. I would say 80 to 90% of the people aren't. So that's why I don't use that a ton. It's a great tool to have in my back pocket. Um, but I don't use that one a ton. And I probably wouldn't have went right into getting certified to do those Dutch tests unless I was really just trying to get blood chem. Yeah. Um, so when are, are you going to be doing blood chem? Yeah, I am. Um, I'm planning on doing it in the fall. I. It's hard to just like manage a business, having a little one at home and then doing an additional course. And I really like to be able to make sure I have the time to commit to really take in that information. That's one thing with level two. Um, I took it right after my son was born because I knew that I wasn't going to be having a client load. And I thought that it was going to be fine for me to just focus on this one class. Level two is really hard for assortative wellness. It's a lot of information and a lot of different things that you learn about. So I do regret that a little bit because I felt like I was running on not a lot of sleep. I had a new baby that I was adjusting to and I didn't have a lot of just capacity or bandwidth to focus on that content. Even though I might have been consuming it, I wasn't necessarily absorbing it. So I really have had to go back and relearn everything again. Um, so yes, I plan on doing level three. I just, I want to make sure that I can really absorb all of it. Um, so yeah. yeah. But right away this spring. Yeah. All right. Um, I am in the same place. I have a little one as well. And it is yeah. really hard balancing a business and, you know, all of the things. And then also constantly just wanting to learn more. Like I just want to throw everything sometimes and just focus on learning more. Cause I mean, this is what, this is my passion. This is what I got in. Like, this is the reason I got into all of this. And so it's, it's interesting trying to juggle all of the things on top of being a mom to a little one who requires a lot. So right. I just, so, for me, I just want to sit down and read a book. Like I, I want know. to like an educational book and I'm like, can you please take like your normal nap right now? So I can have an hour to read this book and then, <laughs> yeah. end up, and then you end up not, not reading all the things that you want to read. And it's, it's I hard. Know. I know. I'm like, I find myself going on walks, like just to listen to a podcast. I'm like, we need to go for a walk, like get in the stroller. Let's go. <laughs> so, yeah. um, somebody asked if I had, if you had to choose, um, between HTMA or GI map, which one would you do first? Um, I know what's your experience with HTMA, um, so far. So I just started kind of diving into HTMA, um, this past fall with getting really familiar with that. Um, I feel like I've, they're two very different tests, so it's kind of a hard yeah. question. <laughs> yeah. I, since I did HTMA and knowing what I know about minerals, I run an HTMA right off the bat with all of my clients, mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily run a GI map off the bat with all of my clients. Um, so I would, if they're asking, like, course-wise what you would do first, or are they asking test-wise what you would do first? Test-wise for a client. Okay. So yeah. I would say... I guess I would probably go back to saying I would run an HTMA because that comes down more to nutrients and making sure that we want to um, have those really foundational aspects in health in, in place before we dive into functional labs. Mm -hmm. um, so just replenishing nutrients, I would say, is more of a priority than diving into a gut healing protocol right off the bat. There's sometimes, depending on where my clients are at with diet, that I right away will just be like, we're doing an HTMA and a GI map just right away. Um, there's some clients that I wait two months to do a GI map with. So it really just depends. But I would say all my clients, I start with an HTMA first. So that that's what I would that's say. That's awesome. I'm excited to hear that. I love I love hearing that from anybody because um, I, think, I think that it should be the foundational test too, especially because of it being so affordable. Um, so that's awesome. Do you mind if I ask you how you structure your services? That's, those are questions that I get, um, 
kind of in my DMs a lot is just how people are structuring this with labs and their consultation and making sure that they're making enough money. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I mean, I would say all NTPs that I spoke with are very different in terms of how they do this. Work with clients for either a three month time period or a six month time period. I also have an intensive that I do offer some clients depending on where they're at. That's just like a 90 minute session and then they can have one follow up call with me and it Mm -hmm. gives them kind of their blueprint, but it has less of the accountability factor in it than having that three month time commitment or that six month time commitment. I feel like doing it that way has been really successful for me um, because clients are able to commit to working with me for a certain amount of time versus sometimes when people sell single sessions, depending on how they do it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't come back after the next appointment. Mm -hmm. Um, So I feel like by structuring it with this three month uh, or six month, it just allows clients to get that full experience and really see progress over time versus sometimes we know that you might not see a lot of progress in the first two weeks or anything like that. So, I mean, I would definitely change things up if I wasn't having good results with that, but I don't feel like I have a hard time getting clients to sign on when I really break down what I offer and what Mm -hmm. that includes and having testimonials from other clients on my website and then featured on my Instagram page, I feel like clients are comfortable committing to that. Um, So I initially do like their initial intakes when they do either the three or six month and we do the HTMA, we do the nutritional assessment questionnaire that they have us do in the NTA. And then I do like their health history and the food and mood journal. So basically what they teach us in the NTA. And then after that, I do, after I get that initial, all those initial intake forms, I do like a 90 minute onboarding session. And then after that, we have a, um, we have like bi-weekly check-ins for the rest of the time. And then how um, long are those sessions? Just out of curiosity. They're 45 minutes. Okay. And then, um, I house everything on practice better. And then I have that chat feature that's in practice better that clients are able to check in with me in between appointments. And that kind of helps them ask questions about like, brands and recipes and hey I'm not sure about this um am I doing this right type thing and it really helps with their confidence I feel like so I really like having that feature as well yeah that's awesome that's really great so if somebody's working with you for three months or six months and you're not seeing the results that you were hoping let's say by running the HTMA they're they're cleaning things up then do you recommend like the additional testing um and you just you just charge them for the test and then continue on with the the services basically as yeah, I, I've done that a few times and typically when I do my onboarding calls with them if I'm like you know you could benefit from a GI map or something but why don't we wait two months and see where you're at in two months and then we have the option to have that on the table and we can use that if needed I didn't used to mention it I didn't really think about it and then I hated somebody committing financially to working with me for three months or six months and then being like, hey, you know what? I think you need to do this other $300 test that I didn't tell you about. So that was just kind of like an ex- something that I learned from experience over like the first few months of me having those other tests um, is just to, even if they're if I'm not going to suggest that, suggest that at the beginning, just kind of leaving it on the table that, hey, if we're not necessarily getting the results with just food or we need to go further and do maybe a G or a Dutch test too. In addition to the G- GI map, that's an option and it's this much, but I'm not going to say that you need that right now. We can mm. kind of evaluate when we get to that two month or the three month mark, if that's something that we want to dive into. Yeah, that's awesome. To get those clients, you said that you're, you don't really have a hard time um, having people sign up with you. I know that's a pain point for a lot of practitioners, just getting those people to say, yes, I want to work with you. What do you attribute that yeah. to? Um, definitely having those testimonials from past clients, um, having, I have some testimonial videos of past clients speaking about their experience with me. I have that on my website. I have that in my Instagram feed and sometimes I'll pull that up on my stories. That's been really, really helpful and effective to have an actual video of a real person. So these people that follow me know that I'm not behind the scenes, just typing out these testimonials. Right. Um, (laughs) So yeah, it's been, I feel like it's relatable for people when they can see that video. So that has been, it's been a huge help to me. 
Um, and I also just think getting really comfortable with having those conversations and talking with people and having more discovery calls. Discovery calls are great, like even just for practice, even if people are saying no, you get more and more confident with presenting yourself and you get really more just so much more comfortable at being confident in your price that you're giving people. So I would just say being confident, having practice. I also did hire um, a business coach. I know that's not for everyone right off the bat. I hired mm -hmm. um, a business coach in a group program about um, maybe six months to a year after I was working as an NTP mm -hmm. um, just because I knew that I wasn't charging my worth and I wanted to feel more comfortable charging a little bit higher a price point so um that was something that was really helpful and just it honestly just made me feel more comfortable telling potential clients the price of what it is to work with me and why this is so important and once I kind of realized it's just like that exchange of energy so mm -hmm. like you know if you're not charging what you're worth your clients might not necessarily be putting in the effort because it might not be a big financial loss to them if they're not if they're not putting in that effort, if that makes sense, like, Absolutely. you know, change, like if it means something to them and it means something to you, you're going to have a lot of success that way. Yeah, definitely. That's why I'm so big on, even if you're working with like family or fam family or friends, and I know it's so tricky, but still charging, like giving away free information, people don't make the changes. And what we do involves having to be on board to make the changes, you know? Absolutely. So yeah, I, it's tough. Personal when I first started working and there are family members that, you know, haven't felt good for a long time and they wanted help. And I put, spent hours putting together like free protocols for them and for them just not to do it at all um, yeah. because they were about it. Um, yeah. So they're not invested. Exactly. Yeah. So, well, um, I guess I want to be mindful of your time. We only have a few minutes left. Um, do you have any, I guess, main advice going kind of back to RWS, maybe for new practitioners, your kind of takeaway information from this session, like what do you recommend, where do you recommend them spending their time right now? Um, in terms of people who are like struggling, in just struggling to figure out if they should be doing another program, if they should be learning a certain lab, if they should be just getting experience working with clients, like where would you say that um, what, what would you recommend? So I think one of the biggest things that really comes to mind when you ask that question is if you're going, if you're struggling with, you know, feeling confident or you're struggling with choosing what type of continued education you want to invest in, because it is a really big letdown if you put money into something and you don't get out of it what you thought you were going to get, make sure you're actually getting an education with the tests that they're teaching. One of the things that I've heard from different programs is they kind of just teach you how to run a test, but they don't necessarily give you the protocols that go along with it. They don't necessarily teach you um, kind of the foundational aspects that go along with those tests. With RWS, one thing that I loved was they really taught us so much about the gut and how to support its function and not just you need to run this test and this is why you need to run this test and this is how you interpret this test. So mm -hmm. I think really, really important to take into consideration with, it's not a matter of necessarily just knowing how to run and interpret all these tests. Be, if you aren't really what grasping, to do with them. Yeah, yeah. And grasp the foundational aspect of why they might be needing this test in the first place and why they're struggling so much with their health in the first place to have to need all of these extra tests as well. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's great advice. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. This has been really great. I know so many people have been asking me about RWS in general, and I don't have any personal experience with it. So um, I just really appreciate you coming on and sharing your experience. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. It was fun. Yeah. And if, if anybody's looking for her, she's at, you're at Hobo Wellness on Instagram, obviously. And yep. what is your, um, what's your website? So my website is hollybonewellness.com, or yes, hollybonewellness.com. I just changed it. So I'm like, I oh. had to think. Yes. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I, I remember I told you, um, I like just put together the hobo wellness. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, that makes sense. Holly Bowen wellness. 
So I love that. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. My website isn't doesn't have a whole lot on it. It's more so just like an application type thing. And then I have my ebook on there. Um, so honestly, cool. the best hold of me is if if you have questions, it's just to shoot me an Instagram DM. Okay, awesome. That sounds great. Thank you so much. I'll uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Bye.